Imagine you're a longtime TF2 player. You spent your childhood messing around on casual servers, grinding MVM tours, and mastering the mechanics of your favorite classes. Perhaps you got into playing competitively, trading, or making SFM posters. You've logged hundreds, if not thousands of hours in game. However, imagine that one thing is missing from your TF2 experience. You don't yet have a signature unusual. Oh, damn it! An unusual, typically a hat, that uniquely defines you as a TF2 player. A hat that perfectly encapsulates your playstyle, fashion sense, and of course backpack value, and showcases it to the community at large. Now, for most people, choosing a signature unusual requires balancing looks and affordability. The very best looking hats tend to be very expensive, so choosing a hat that doesn't break the bank involves compromise. If you have a budget of 40 keys and want an effect like burning flames, you'll probably have to settle for a robo hat like the base metal billy cock. Or if you have 75 keys and want an all class hat like the rotation sensation, you may end up with a common effect like blizzardy storm. For some people, however, compromise is not an option. These people must have the best of the best, and they're willing to spend whatever it costs to make that happen. If their unusual isn't so rare, flashy, and over the top that it makes people stop in their tracks and marvel at their incredible piece of headwear, then to them it's not worth buying at all. But what kind of hats even hold this kind of reputation? These days, the very best unusuals have increasingly become Halloween unusuals, specifically original Halloween hats from 2011 to 2014, with effects such as Knife Storm, Arcana, or Bonzo the All Nine. But with this shift in popularity has come a massive market upheaval. Within the past few years, the price of old Halloween unusuals have exploded, in many cases doubling, tripling, or even quadrupling in less than a year. Hats that were once worth 50 keys are now over 300 keys. Others that were 300 keys are now as much as 1,000. It seems as if there is always someone willing to pay more than the last guy, and old Halloween unusuals have nowhere to go but up. Given such a rapid and unprecedented price increase, it's natural to be skeptical of the current trends. Are people really willing to spend thousands of dollars on a single Halloween unusual? Are we in the midst of an economic bubble? Are prices soon bound to come crashing down? In order to answer these questions and more, we need to become experts on unusual hat effects. In particular, we need to understand why old Halloween unusuals are so unique today compared to other effects, and how it got to be this way in the first place. Fun fact, did you know that there are a whopping 161 unusual effects and 21 effect generations currently in the game? You probably didn't, but what you did know is that there are a lot of different unusuals in TF2. TF2 has been around for a really long time, and every year like clockwork we get more and more unusual effects, these days in place of any actual playable content. In addition to the original 1st, 2nd, and 3rd gen effects, we've now got 9 different Halloween generations, 2 Smithsmith generations, 2 Summer generations, and 5 other miscellaneous effect generations. We've got effects that set your head on fire, surround your hat with hearts, ducks, and bats, and envelop your head in bright magical swirls. We've got effects that subtly accent your headwear, and effects that blatantly give away your position to the enemy team. We've got effects with simple names like steaming and smoking, and then ridiculous names like Serenus Lumen, Reverium Irregularis, and Fragmentalis Lycidian, the last of which I just made up and you didn't even notice. In short, we've currently got more unusual effects than anybody could ever need. But with such diversity of unique and interesting effects, how then do old Halloween unusuals manage to stand out among the rest? Contrary to popular belief, it is not simply because these effects are the best looking in the game. In reality, the answer has everything to do with rarity. If you take a step back and look at TF2's unusual effects from a holistic perspective, you'll find that all effects can be broken down into four fundamental categories based on their rarity. There are common effects, concentrated effects, sparse effects, and then hybrid effects. Now if these terms mean nothing to you right now, don't worry. I've coined these terms specifically for this video, so there is no expectation that you've heard of any of them before. In fact, it would be a little bit weird if you had. Anyway, let's get into them. Common effects, like the name implies, are the most common effects in the game. Made up of TF2's original 1st, 2nd, and 3rd gen unusuals, these effects can be unboxed year-round out of many different crates and cases, and can be found on almost any hat in the game. Combined, common effects make up over 80% of all hat effects in the game, ensuring that most hats in TF2 have lots of sellers at any given time. 
the other 20% of effects are limited in nature. Each of these effects can only be unboxed certain times of the year, or obtained out of certain specific crates or cases, and fall into one of the three other categories. Concentrated effects, for instance, can only be unboxed from a single case, but are restricted only to hats available in that case. This means that although these effects are very rare, they are concentrated exclusively on a small number of hats, giving buyers less options and creating a surprising amount of competition among sellers. Examples of concentrated effects include Invasion effects, Halloween 2015 effects, and New Summer effects. Sparse effects, on the other hand, tend to have fewer sellers. These effects are typically limited to a single crate or seasonal event, but are not restricted to a small subset of hats and can be found on hundreds of different hats in the unusual quality. This spreads a limited number of effects sparsely over many possible hats, making each individual hat rarer and giving buyers quite a few more options to choose from. End of the line and robo effects are good examples of sparse effects. Finally, hybrid effects such as recent Halloween and winter effects are a sort of hybrid between the two previous kinds of effects. Like concentrated effects, hybrid effects are intensely concentrated on hats from a single case. However, like sparse effects, a rare subset of hybrid effects are spread thinly across many different hats in the game. This is because during their original seasonal events, hybrid effects could be unboxed out of any case in the game. Thus, anyone who unboxed older cases during these events had the chance of obtaining a significantly rarer unusual that could no longer be unboxed again once the event ended. Now, given what you've learned about unusual effects, what category of effects do you think the original 2011 through 2014 Halloween effects fall into? What category of effects would allow them to skyrocket in price in such a short period of time? If you chose sparse effects, then you'd be correct. Like end of the line and robo effects, original Halloween effects are limited effects that are spread thinly across many different hats in the game. However, unlike other sparse effects, there's one aspect of original Halloween effects that makes them even rarer than most. That is, that they can no longer be unboxed at all. While end of the line and robo effects can still be obtained if you open the right crate, original Halloween effects are not tied to any crate in particular and haven't been available during a Halloween event since 2017. This has kept supply extremely low. Most of the best original effects have less than 400 in existence, and hundreds of ultra-rare 1 of 1 or 1 of 2 unusuals exist to this day. Once more, as time has passed since these effects were originally unboxed, more and more of these hats have become stuck in collectors or dead backpacks, making these effects feel even rarer than they really are. But being rare in a vacuum isn't what makes these effects so desirable. Instead, the real reason why old Halloween effects are so unique is because they are rare compared to everything else. If we take a look back at all four categories of unusual effects, what you'll find is that for being some of the rarest items in the game, the average unusual is paradoxically quite common. 80% of all unusuals are common effects with dozens of each hat in existence, and even the majority of limited effects are concentrated on the same few unusuals, making them appear disproportionately common. Thus, if you really want to get a hat that truly feels rare and unique, picking out an original Halloween effect seems like a no-brainer. This perspective can also explain why old Halloween effects only recently shot up in price. Back in 2014, when the last series of original Halloween effects were released, TF2 was a completely different game. There was no such thing as concentrated or hybrid effects, and common effects were significantly less common than they are today. Back then, there were 2,500 of each first gen effect, 7,000 of each second gen effect, and 4,000 of each third gen effect in the game, compared to 5,900, 8,900, and 17,000 respectively today. At the same time, there was roughly the same number of original Halloween effects as there are now. Thus, compared to other effects, old Halloween effects made up a greater percentage of hats on the market, allowing rare and iconic first-gen unusuals to hold most of the prestige. Over the years, however, as more players unbox series crates and Valve reintroduce first-gen effects via unlocked crates in new cases, original Halloween effects have increasingly become a very small proportion of the overall market. Now, while some collectors might be willing to buy an item on the basis of rarity alone, most players would be reluctant to spend hundreds of dollars on a boring or ugly item, even if it was one of the rarest items in the game. This suggests that there is one last reason, perhaps a very obvious reason, why original Halloween effects sell for so much money these days. That is, they look really damn good. 
To this day, many would argue that Valve's first Halloween effects are some of the best looking and most unique effects in the game. Effects like Hellfire and Arcana are bright and flashy, It's a Secret to Everybody and Stormy 13th Hour are massive and perfectly epitomize the spirit of Halloween, and Bonzo the All 9 is one of, if not the most crazy effects in terms of sheer size and creativity. While the visual appearance of unusual effects is of course subjective, the fact that so many people swear by these effects is enough to convince me that Valve created something very special here. Thus, what truly makes old Halloween unusual so ridiculously expensive is their unique combination of great effects and extreme rarity compared to everything else. So basically, supply and demand. I mean, after hearing all of this, it probably seems really obvious. If you want an effect that looks fantastic, but is also rare and unique in a way that few other effects are, then you're gonna have to spend a lot of money to buy it. However, could I have predicted that these effects would ever be as high as they are today? You know, probably not. Looking back though, I think it's silly to believe that these hats wouldn't eventually go up in price. The current trends have been clear for years, and as long as even just a few people are willing to pay hundreds or thousands of dollars for a rare Halloween unusual, there's little incentive for high tier traders not to track them down, mark up their prices by 200%, and sit on them until they can get the perfect offer. Now, given what we've talked about so far, I don't think that this is an economic bubble. Prices might be slightly inflated due to hype surrounding these hats, but the underlying reason for these effects increasing in price is actually quite sound. Still though, I think it's worth asking. Is this growth sustainable? Are prices going to come down anytime soon? I'd argue yes and no. As prices go up, less and less people can afford these unusuals, meaning they will naturally take longer and longer to sell. At some theoretical point in the future, traders simply won't be able to sell their hats in any meaningful amount of time, forcing them to lower their prices. But will this result in prices coming down long term? I don't think so. More realistically, other profit traders will notice the lower prices, buy up these unusuals, and try and resell for the same high prices. When they can't, they will lower their prices again, and the cycle will rinse and repeat. In other words, I don't see prices coming down, but I also don't really see them going up much either. In fact, prices are so crazy right now that we may have already reached the theoretical maximum. What I think could actually tank prices, however, is if these effects got any kind of meaningful re-release from Valve. I think many people who own these effects hold tightly to the belief that they are officially retired and will never be released again. That said, Valve has never legally stated that they won't re-release these effects, and at least historically speaking, it wouldn't be unprecedented. Unusual taunts, for instance, used to be as prized as old Halloween effects are today. They could only be unboxed out of a few crates from a single update, and supply was incredibly low. But when Valve introduced taunt unusual fires in the Halloween 2016 update, and subsequently added them to every case in the game, the supply of taunts exploded and prices eventually plummeted. Thus, if Valve ever brought back old Halloween effects in a similar fashion, you can bet that these unusuals would become much more affordable. While I'd personally suggest a more moderate release to ensure greater market stability, I'd honestly much prefer a massive dump of old Halloween effects than never seeing them again. Until then, we've just got to live with what we've got. While it really sucks to see effects that were once affordable become effectively unobtainable, I'd also remind you guys that we do live in the golden age of unusuals. There are more kinds of unusual hats, taunts, and weapons than ever before, and the number of mid-range options has never been higher. Thus, if you're in the market for a signature unusual, I don't think that you'll have too hard of a time finding something truly special. Until next time guys, thanks for watching.